Okay, I had a lot of fun going up Mount Baldy recently. Um, this is something that I did when I was very young. I had a new racing bike, I thought it was super cool, and I went up Mount Baldy, and it was very, very difficult. <laughs> First of all, uh, the real question is, what is the steepest climb that you can go up? As far as the Guinness Book of World Records is concerned, there's a lot of debate on this, but they say that actually Baldwin Street in New Zealand at 35% grade is the steepest. Now, the reason why, there are steeper climbs in this, but the reason why is because that's a prolonged distance. It's longer distance, it's 3.5 kilometers or 2.2 miles. It's long enough to be considered a, a, you know, a verifiable climb. Now there are steeper gradients, of course, in streets here and there. For example, there's a Canton Avenue in Pittsburgh, which is 37%, but it's only for 21 feet. So again, that's not included. Uh, there's Bradford Street in San Francisco, which is 41%, uh, 41% grade. Uh, and that's only for 30 feet. So again, that's where they, they come up with these, these things. It's the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, they make their own rules. Now, there's a lot of other uh, streets in the United States. Love all these California roads. Uh, that's why we are so lucky as bicyclists to have so many mountains. I don't know how to say this. Waiapio Valley Road in Hawaii uh, is it comes in at 25%, but they claim that the peaks are uh, at 45%. 45%, that would be insane. Uh, there's also, of course, gotta love the Italians. They have a little bit of the overstatement, La Scanupia. Uh, claim grades up to 45%. Now that's claim grades. In reality, uh, it's listed as 17.6% over 7.5 kilometers uh, with peaks of 28%. So uh, yeah, there you go. So what is the science behind this? Well, first of all, uh, we have to differentiate slope and gradient. So 100% gradient is actually a 45 degree slope. When you think of 100%, you, you're not thinking straight up. Uh, you're thinking actually halfway to straight up, basically. Because remember, slope is rise over run. What are the factors to getting up the steepest climbs in the world? Well, there's really three factors that limit this. There's rider strength, of course. There's tire pressure. And there's position on the bicycle. Uh, you have to have enough energy to spin the pedals against gravity. <laughs> and uh, gearing can help. This is a, one of the key factors. Of course, when you're talking about the steepest climbs, it only helps to an extent, but that is huge. That is one of the most uh, amazing gifts of modern innovation. Uh, another thing is tire pressure, because that affects the, the contact patch on the road, and we know that friction is your friend when going up steep, steep climbs. You don't want to be sliding around. You have to have it low enough to grip the road, but high enough to where it's basically works as a tire. <laughs> uh, so a little bit lower tire pressure might actually be key in going up super steep hills, uh, which is why a lot of times in pro races, you'll actually see bicyclists get off their bike and run up the hill or walk up the hill because it might actually be more efficient. Another thing that's a factor is position on the bicycle. In general, you have more weight on the rear wheel and that's a good thing because that's what's really driving you. That's where the drivetrain is and it's really what's propelling you. When the hill gets steep enough, you have to lean your body forward. You have to get over that front wheel, but not so much to where the drivetrain and the rear wheel start slipping. If you go too far forward, you're not going to get any friction. If you go too far back, you're going to flip back. And generally, they say you get to about 86.9% uh, over the front wheel. And then you, that's about the point where you, theoretically you can't go any further or else you just completely lose traction on the rear wheel. So in theory, your center of mass cannot surpass the vertical center of the front wheel uh, because, or actually the rear wheel also, because at that point then you're going to start tipping, you're going to lose friction, you're not going to be able to ride the bicycle. Uh, so the problem with all of this in practice is these extreme positions, they remove traction from the rear tire, uh, you probably end up sliding backwards um, at some point because you just are not getting the friction. Basically the steepest grade you can get up is 80%. So 80% based on position of the bicycle alone, 80% is the steepest hill. Now, friction though drops this down to 60%. So let's talk about the coefficient of friction. Asphalt, which is a lot of what roads are paved with, is softer. So the best uh, materials to use when you're going up a steep grade are actually concrete. The other thing is when you factor in the coefficient of friction with rubber, uh, and all these other factors, then you again, you drop down to 60%. So that's what physicists say. So power is not actually the 
the greatest limiting factor. Really, friction is the weakest link. The things you can do to help, uh, if you're really trying to get up a 60% gradient, uh, which, you know, good luck. <laughs> you want to make sure it's warmer. You don't want to just go right out, um, warm, want to warm up the tire a little bit. And also you want to do it on a warm day. That's going to actually increase your, your friction. So if you go on a warm day, if you m m lean all the way over your bicycle, if you have a lot of power, you can get up a 60% grade. But in order to get up those steep climbs, you probably need some glue. 